following video contains sexual content and adult situations. Some material may be inappropriate for smaller children. We suggest watching together as a family. Uh... Happy Valentine's Day, Wolfpack. It's time. Time to talk about an outright awful episode of the infamous 2000s reboot of the classic horror anthology show, The Twilight Zone. Yes, I have found it. One of this reboot's worst episodes by far. I started out reviewing this obscure reboot, mainly because it was easier to do reviews on, but I also held out faith that I could find some good episodes hidden behind all the garbage that this reboot had. This is not one of those hidden gems. You know how some people hate on the 2000s reboot of The Twilight Zone for being stupid? Well, this is a tale of suspense that completely warrants all the hate. The Gen 3 Twilight Zone has a romantic drama episode where the show tries to teach people about the meaning of true love and how we experience sexual fantasies. Let me repeat that. The Reboot Twilight Zone, a show that has a wacky talking doll, Moira Queen trapped in a Sims game, and a story about a white man turning black, is going to offer us a love story where the writers want to teach us all a lesson about true romance. Be afraid, everyone. Be very afraid. The worst part is that this episode was also intended to be the first Twilight Zone Valentine's Day special and would frequently air on Sci-Fi and Schiller during February to touch all our hearts. Well, it more so beats down your heart with its stupidity, but we'll get into that real soon. In my opinion, everything wrong with modern relationships is presented in this episode on full display, which actually could have been a real clever commentary about relationship issues. But where the show screws it up is, of course, in the execution. Now, before we go on, I just want to warn all the younger viewers or the folks who are sensitive about gender stereotypes on the piss-poor representation in this, because it not only might offend people on a political level, but also has the added bonus of insulting your intelligence. Good sign, right? This episode was marketed as the hotter and sexier version of the Twilight Zone geared towards the adult audience, so remember that as we watch it painfully fail. Also, there will be blatant spoilers in this review, but it's a bad reboot Twilight Zone episode, so who cares? Well, let's get this over with. Was this Twilight Zone supernatural tale of heartwarming romance a true gift to those who seek real love? Or is it a dated, nauseating pile of fluff that makes one sick to their stomach? Let's find out. This is my review on the Gen 3 Twilight Zone Valentine's Day special, Sensuous Cindy. So, our episode opens up with our protagonist waking up in bed next to his beloved fiancé. Our main character is a lustful, geeky ex-womanizer named Benjamin Baker, played by Hades from Once Upon a Time. He tries getting some action with his hot fiancé, a computer expert named Samantha, but she rebuffs his advances, telling him that she wants to hold off on having sex again for six months after they get formally married. 
She tells him that she wants their wedding to be all the more special and points out that sex will be all the more sweeter during their honeymoon, implying that waiting will be worth it since it shows her that her fiancé truly loves her if he can hold off on sexual contact for a while. Yes, really. In her mind, that's a sign of true love. True love is different. Yeah, for all the men in the audience, this is all just an excuse for her to wear a white wedding dress, so it makes her appear as a noble, pure virgin. If you think that's just me being sexist, just wait until you see how the rest of this episode plays out. However, our hero, Ben, is upset by this absurd request since he can't wait that long to get laid again, but he reluctantly promises to swear off all sex for six months so he won't lose his future wife. Unfortunately for him, he finds it too hard to wait for sex because he works at a modeling agency where he's constantly surrounded by hot girls and he becomes super tempted to cheat on his fiance. Stop, stop, stop. It's dead. This episode is just dead. You killed it, Twilight Zone. First few minutes and you killed it. From that setting alone, this whole premise kills the entire plot. You heard that right. I did not alter this description at all. The central conflict is that our main character is a horny pervert who is so impatient to have sex that he's tempted to cheat on his fiance. Do I even have to say anything about this? Well, I will anyway. This is a horrible beginning to our Valentine's Day special. First off, our main protagonist loses all sympathy almost instantly when the audience learns that he's so obsessed with having sex that he's ready to cheat on a woman he's getting married to. No normal person is going to connect with this guy or like him in any way. All it does is make any sane viewer, both female and male, despise this guy with a passion. This main character is too sleazy for us to root for. You ruined the Twilight Zone forever! But Cat, this type of character was done well before on Tales from the Crypt and Tales from the Dark Side. Yeah, the unfaithful adulterer is a character archetype that has been done before on both of those shows. But you see, the thing is that most of the time, we're not meant to feel sympathy for those kind of people. In Tales from the Crypt and the Dark Side, the unfaithful lover is usually portrayed as a villain or are blatantly shown in the wrong. We're not meant to like them. And yeah, sometimes romantic dramas can show the cheating character in a sympathetic light. The only way you can have a sympathetic adulterer is if they're either abused, neglected, or haven't had sex in years. Not a couple of months or in a situation to talk stuff out. However, the reboot Twilight Zone fails to do that. The episode wants us to feel sad for Ben Baker, when in reality, he just comes across as a pathetic, creepy loser. And even worse, we're supposed to see him grow up as a mature character by the end of this. But the fact that he's tempted to cheat on his fiancé ruins a lot of the guy's chances for redeemable value. I don't feel sorry for him. I'm more so thinking, how the heck did this guy even get a fiancé at all if he's so impatient about having sex and is willingly checking out other girls he sees at work? I almost hate this guy more than Jason from Bad Egg. Secondly, unlike the cheating lovers in Tales from the Crypt or the Dark Side, we're supposed to want to see him live in the end. You know how in the Crypt Keeper's tales, the adulterer usually suffers some form of karma or dies by the end for their infidelity? 
Well, that doesn't happen on here. The Twilight Zone wants us to root for him and see him as a changed man by the end. I can respect the Twilight Zone for wanting to make him a more well-rounded character, but the reboot Twilight Zone has shown that they're not very good at this kind of storytelling. In short, the main character sucks and fails to gain our appreciation precisely because he's a sex-addicted pervert who's risking his long-lasting relationship for cheap sex. This guy is our hero, ladies and gentlemen. He cries over waiting a few months for sex. What a pathetic baby. Also, this entire setup in general is weak. The Twilight Zone, a horror series about human beings encountering the supernatural horrors of the unknown, has this as the main conflict. Our hero is upset and angsting because he has to wait six months for sex. That's it. Oh wow, you nailed it Gen 3 Twilight Zone. I'm so sure that this is the most relatable problem you have ever talked about and will affect everyone watching. And here I thought most horror shows were about humans confronting otherworldly horrors, conquering inner demons, teaching people moral lessons that could shape their outlook on life, criticizing the negatives of our society as a whole, or just offering people a fun little horror story with cool monsters. But who cares? Six months without sex! That's the true social commentary we all wanted to know more about. Good job, Reboot Twilight Zone. Good job. I mean, I just thought this show about political commentary would discuss some serious issues, like the dark side of humankind, and moral issues that have no concrete answers to them. But screw that. Waiting six months to get laid? That's the real trouble. It's all about the first world problems, baby. Heck, don't you just feel sad for this middle class white guy who works a high paying job and is on his way towards an expensive wedding where all he needs to do is wait for the honeymoon to tear up some carpet? Oh no, six months without sex. It's like I'm in high school again. <laughs> Poor whiny idiot. Also, is anyone else really confused by the order to not have sex for a few months when we see that the couple clearly shares a bed already? Even if you do complain about waiting for sex for that long, it's just ridiculous. So this episode's setup falls apart from multiple viewpoints on this topic. What more can I say? The main character sucks, the social commentary is weak, the conflict is piss poor, and nothing about this feels interesting even though it's meant to be an adult Twilight Zone story. This episode already sucks, and we haven't even met the main villain yet. Oh joy. Like I said, our hero Benny finds it so hard to wait six months for sex because he bumps into a ton of hot chicks at work who tempt him, and he whines to his dude bro Garrett, the tech guy at work, complaining about how living a few days without sex is so hard. goes on forever. Get a life, dude. It's not that big a deal. All you have to do is wait six months. Six months. Some guys don't even get sex in six years. Maybe I'd feel more sorry for Ben if he wasn't a grown adult crying to his friends like a fragile teenage girl. Think about it. 
This is a plot that feels like it belongs in a teen sex comedy, not a tale of suspense from the Twilight Zone. If Ben and Samantha were teenagers, or even college students who were still in the early dating years of their relationship, and Ben assumed that her holding off on sex meant that their love was never going anywhere, then maybe, maybe that could justify everything that happens in this story. But they don't do that. No, it has to be a couple getting married soon. That way, we can give the audience some spicy drama. Except they forgot the spice, and the compelling drama, and the genuine humanity from the people involved. As Ben drones on and on about his sex life, his dude bro Garrett introduces him to a cool new VR game, dubbed Sensuous Cindy. Apparently, this Sensuous Cindy is a virtual reality game that offers the gamer a sex simulation in cyberspace, and it's absolutely perfect for horny guys everywhere who can't get any, tempting our hero Ben to give it a whirl. I have to admit that it is pretty hilarious that the reboot Twilight Zone actually predicted the rise of VR headset games, and how people would get addicted to romance simulations in the future. But sadly, there are a few other problems on the rise later. And I just want to point out that our hero, a guy who uses the computer for his everyday work, has to be told by his pal that the internet has porn on it. This is our hero, people. A guy so stupid that he was unaware that there was porn on the internet. No, now it's just a place for people to bitch about useless shit, purchase mail order brides. Oh, it's porn! Oh, yeah. 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 This honestly wouldn't be a huge problem if it weren't for the fact that this episode came out during the era of teen sex comedies, where a popular running gag is that teens can find porn online. A bit behind the times, aren't we, Reboot Twilight Zone? This is also a key element in this story, everybody. The Twilight Zone wants to show us how sex games and porn on the internet consumes our everyday lives. This would be super cool if the rest of this episode didn't fail, and if we didn't get a good version of this story on Gravity Falls. Man, this game is amazing! I don't know why anyone abandoned it. Seriously, check out Seuss and the Real Girl if you want to see this plot done right. Because, spoiler alert, the reboot Twilight Zone is not very good at it. So Ben's dude bro encourages him to play some sex games on the web, and he tests the Sensuous Cindy program, where he arrives inside of a cyberspace world. He sees that the gamers really knew what they were doing, since everything in the sex simulator feels real. But then we meet Sensuous Cindy, played by Jamie Presley. Okay, I'll grant them this. Yes, Jamie Presley is attractive, and she does seem like an ideal choice to play a Playboy Cyber Girl, but I do have some problems with how her character arc plays out. Oh yes, this sex program is our second main character. While Jamie Presley does her job of simply looking hot, Sensuous Cindy is not a character who is acted very well. I don't know what the director or Presley was going for here, but Sensuous Cindy sounds very dull and robotic. I know, I know, her character is meant to be an AI program who just has lots of sex. But is it just me, or does Presley sound like she's just really phoning in all her lines? Why don't you just say that? I need love to consider this practice. Didn't you make a little promise to me 
last night? All I know is I've never felt like this before. Talking about chemistry, silly. You know that mysterious attraction between two people who belong together? Pheromones and all that good stuff. Then? some fucking emotion into it. Wow. Jamie Presley just sounds awful in this. I'm sure some people can argue that Cindy is intended to sound like an emotionless robot to give the audience a HAL 9000 vibe, or even criticize how shallow people who want sex don't want to hear the woman speak, but her lack of emotion is very awkward and distracting. Sensuous Cindy has a dull voice and bland facial expressions, which could make her dark and mysterious, but this character comes across as just being bored. Not helping matters is the fact that she gets emotional scenes later on and still acts this dull. Seriously, I think even Megan Fox can act better than this chick. I know what I said, but I'm not taking it back. Jamie Presley acts so bad in this that she makes Megan Fox look good in comparison. That's how bad it is, people. This supernatural entity is just dull as a wooden block. As the sensuous Cindy game world grants Ben his sexy experience, our narrator shows up to give us the lowdown. Sexual fantasies. Every one of us has them. Harmless enough most of the time. On the eve of his marriage, Benjamin Baker had decided to indulge himself. He's about to get very, very lucky. Where is he? Dun, dun, dun. We then get some very awkward chemistry between our lead characters that feels almost so bad it's good. What, are they cannibals? Are they going to eat each other? For some reason, Ben is now reluctant to have sex in the sex computer game where he wanted to get some free sex. But Cindy tells him that it's okay because she's just an AI in a video game, so it's not real. And Ben's like, oh, okay then, I'll totally bang you now. And then they both bang. They share cyber sex in the heaven level and sleep away together. But all I'm thinking is, what do you think is going on in the real world? I mean, after he puts on the virtual reality sex game, his bro said that the simulation gives the gamer the true sexual experience, and he did go all the way with Cindy, so does that mean we just watch this guy jack off in his office? Uh, 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 uh. Oh, cheese and crackers, that's vile. You're going to hell, episode. That's disgusting. What the heck is the matter with you, reboot Twilight Zone? I mean, how else are we supposed to interpret this outside of our main character jacking off in his office? I mean, how would people react to this in the real world? And in the future, virtual reality sex will be perfected and society will be forever changed. Mr. Wembley? You like that, don't you, bitch? <laughs> Did you see the ghost? It ran through here inside me! 
and people wonder why this reboot failed. This episode really gave us a guy using a VR headset to simulate sex, then cranking one out in his office. This is the grossest thing I have ever seen on this channel. Just ew. Ew, reboot Twilight Zone. Ew. You should not have gone there. So after cheating on his fiance with a Playboy cyber girl, Cindy starts falling in love with Ben and actually grows true feelings for him. Why? Well, get this. She falls for Ben because our protagonist is nothing like the other guys she's banged before. He was actually nice to her, while every other gamer just hid it and quit it, making him special. Yep. Because he was nice to her while having some cheap sex, in her mind, that equals true love. True love is different. Yeah, this is now a Yandere story, folks. Sensuous Cindy is now our villainous Yandere, who grows beyond her programming and wants to keep Ben all for herself, thinking that they truly love each other. The rest of this episode becomes a love triangle with a psycho ex-girlfriend coming for Ben's love. Oh good, the Twilight Zone is doing the computer AI growing sentient plot and the Yandere dark romance plot in the same episode. Aren't we so lucky? Ordinarily, I'd find this okay if it weren't for Cindy's lack of emotion holding back the horror in this story. Yandere's are supposed to be dark, crazy, and over the top, but for some reason, Presley restrains her performance and sounds like she's just annoyed by something. In a tale about a Yandere AI obsessing over some generic guy, the Twilight Zone surprisingly downplays it, ruining a huge horror experience. Cindy could be a fun Yandere or a scary villain, but her lack of emotion makes her as boring and forgettable as that evil dude from Thor 2. Come on, Presley. You're a Yandere android in a Twilight Zone story. At least pretend you're having fun. This episode should be as over-the-top as Mr. Motivation, but the show wants a serious romance. Why? We later cut to the couple's house in reality, where Ben gives flowers to his fiance, promising that he really loves her and lies about being faithful to her. Class act. But uh-oh, sensuous Cindy calls him on the phone, revealing that she can hack into the real world's technology to see him at any time, and asking him to come back to the game for more sex. Ben, our tragic hero, lies to both women in his life and confirms that everything is perfectly A-OK. -okay. The next day, Ben goes to work at the office but refuses to use the VR headset again because he truly loves his fiance. You know, this gesture would probably have a stronger impact if it weren't for the fact that he already slept with Cindy and got his sex drive out of his system by jacking off in his office. Not to mention that the Twilight Zone tale gives the implication that sensuous Cindy is an AI evolving into an emotional person, so it might count as cheating on his fiance in a technical sense. But hey, refusing to jack off to porn games for the sake of your fiancé is true love, I guess. True love is different. Suddenly, sensuous Cindy calls him and asks Ben to come back to Bang again because she admits that she really loves him and wants to be with him forever and ever. Ben tries telling Cindy that she's just a robot and incapable of feeling love, but she stupidly believes that he still loves her and wants more of her. 
So Ben lies to her and says that he'll totally bang again after he finishes up work. So Cindy goes on sleep mode. He finishes working late, lies to his fiancée about loving her, and heads home. But oh no, sensuous Cindy comes back online, demanding that Ben come back to her. When he doesn't notice her, Cindy traps Ben in an elevator to hold him hostage until he caves into her orders. Yet Ben very foolishly tells her off by stating that they just had a fling, their sex was a one-night stand, and she means nothing to him, because he points out that despite sexing up the computer, he truly loves his fiance Samantha. Yeah, because isn't that what love is all about? Telling your virtual girlfriend that you're breaking up with her because she was just used for cheap pleasure while still claiming to love your real world spouse. That's all true love. True love is different. This story's pacing is almost as bad as the moral we get in the end. So after dumping Cindy, she leaves Ben trapped in the elevator to die. Ben panics and instantly begs Cindy to take him back and grant him a second chance, lying about how he truly loves her and will see her again for sex soon. And she easily falls for it, then releases him, where Ben lies to her again, hides like a cowardly wuss, and calls his idiot computer dude bro over to help him fix the Cindy program. Wow, our Yandre villain is kind of a moron. Seriously, Sensuous Cindy might just be the most unimpressive AI Yandre villain this show has ever given. Come on, New 13, show us how a real good Yandre character gets things done. Yay, it's Magna! You're so bad. Leaving me all alone. Last time was that easy, right? Magna, I love it when you talk to me. Naughty boy, you went to town on me when you liked it. You just shoved it right in. Oh, but maybe you liked it better when you was your place. Now, to be fair, we do get an honestly good scary scene in this episode. Ben is cowering in the dark corner while that Yandere Cindy's voice calls for him, echoing all throughout the empty hallways. It's actually very well done. So, our hero Ben is trapped with a deranged psycho ex-girlfriend controlling this big empty building. He's all alone, and she's slowly turning murderous as she tries to locate him in this empty workplace. What does this show do with this awesome horror story setup? Absolutely nothing, because we see Ben's idiot friend Garrett showing up just in time to save the day, revealing that he took the stairs up since the elevator wasn't working. Are you kidding? That brilliant horror story setup was right there, and you chose to do nothing with it? Epic fail, reboot. Epic fail. Way to kill the mood by having Comic Relief Garrett easily barge in. And wait, so the building is not completely locked down, and instead of taking the stairs to get out of the place, our idiot hero just backs into the corner to cry about how hopeless this is. Once again, our hero, ladies and gentlemen, he's easily tempted to cheat on his fiance, perverted towards women, doesn't know that the internet has porn on it, and is too dumb to use the commonly known building exits to get to a safe place away from a psycho stalker. Remind me again, this guy is supposed to be somebody that the audience can root for, right? His bro Garrett saves him, and they delete the Cindy program, removing her from his life for good. He tells his dude bro that he doesn't want Cindy anymore, because he truly loves his fiance Samantha. Bullshit! Okay, where to begin? First off, poor timing. One of the most poorly paced stories I have ever seen. 
Second, this isn't some grand gesture of love or an attempt to get rid of a toxic person out of somebody's life. This is the equivalent to some guy deleting his personal porn history on their laptop so their lover doesn't find out. He doesn't do this because he's really in love with Samantha. He's doing this to save his own hide. Because isn't that what marriage is all about? True love is deleting your porn network so your spouse never learns about your dark kinky side. True love is different. You're lost. You're lost. I push this key. And that's it. The city vanishes from your life forever. Oh, how I wish that was the end of it. But sadly, Satan called and said he has some bonus content for us to make our suffering go on even longer. Ben returns home and lies to his fiance about loving her some more because that makes him so likable. But when his fiance has computer problems, sensuous Cindy shows up once more to restart their relationship, revealing that she's hacked into all of Ben's electronics so she can get revenge. But instead of coming clean to both the women in his life and admitting that he's a bad boy, Ben hides Cindy from Samantha in a comedic fashion and tells Cindy that she wins and he'll apologize by giving her some rough makeup sex and will be with her forever. Oh no, I'd be sad if I cared about this human trash who can't even keep it in his pants for six months and jacks off in his office, but I don't. Oh boy, how's our terrible perverted main character going to weasel his way out of this one? For some reason, the show wants us to see this gross thing escape unharmed and live happily ever after with his hot fiancé who he cheated on. Why? This guy is the grossest thing alive. So Benny, our hero, lies to his fiance again so he can go back to the office, where he re-enters cyberspace to be with sensuous Cindy once more. But after they kiss, Ben reveals that he gave Cindy a virus to kill her. Yep, our hero saves the day by sleeping with a girl, then infecting her with a virus that would slowly destroy her body. Insert STD joke here, and we all facepalm at how Rod Serling must be rolling over in his grave right about now. Ben tells her that he stopped by at his computer guy's house where Garrett created a virus for him that would kill any defective programs and delete Cindy for good. I don't know what's dumber, the anticlimactic way we killed off our main villain, or the fact that Ben, the moronic dolt who didn't even know you could find porn on the internet, somehow managed to put together a perfect software virus with his buddy that would magically kill a single file program of your choosing, despite showing no skills in computer hacking whatsoever. Now, this could have been a really good scene that makes the audience pity both our hero and our villain, since despite Cindy being a yandere, all she really wanted was real love. But nope, 
it's completely ruined by two things. Number one, Jamie Presley's seriously awful performance. Even when sensuous Cindy is dying, she still gives that dull, monotone voice right as she's decaying into digital dust. Oh, for crying out loud, you're dying! Show some actual emotion! This is a role that demands an over-the-top, juicy performance, yet the actress refuses to go that way! It just soils the fun! Good lord, the only thing great about this is all the easy STD memes that could grow from it. Second, and worst of all, our hero, murdering sensuous Cindy, is meant to be seen as a triumphant moment. We're supposed to cheer Ben on when he finally offs the Yandere AI. But what's meant to be a grand gesture of love for his fiancée Samantha is turned gross and skin-crawling when you realize that our hero is murdering his mistress to make himself look good. Yeah, I said it. This is an adulterer silencing his mistress to cover his tracks and make himself look good for his oblivious romantic partner. If you really think about it, Sensuous Cindy could have been a cool, deep, tragic villain, a yandere AI who was about to grow beyond her programming and feel true love, but remained too unstable to be accepted by the real world. Our hero then reluctantly kills his dating sim, not out of hatred or a need to get her out of his life, but because it had to be done. A mercy kill. He would accept that Cindy would cause mass chaos to the world and its technology if he didn't delete her for good, making our hero realize that he should take his sex life seriously and mature for the sake of the women in his love life and tragically end our title villain on a thought-provoking note. But nope, the reboot Twilight Zone wussed out and went for the basic black and white morality. Ben is good because he claims that he's truly in love with Samantha, and Cindy is the de facto irredeemable bad guy because she's just a robot that malfunctioned. He's a human, and therefore alive and good, while Cindy is a computer, and therefore evil and broken. No questions asked, no discussions on the ethical belief on what feels emotion and what doesn't, no intelligent ending where our hero matures into a wiser person who should take his sex life seriously. Just a basic good versus evil plotline where the episode tells us how to feel about it. Because that's how easy life is. Right, Reboot Twilight Zone? True love is about killing a mistress or suitor you had a one-night stand with so you can keep the real love between you and your partner alive and well. True love is different. So yeah, Sensuous Cindy is dead. Ben chooses to remain faithful to his real love, Samantha, despite his porn addiction, lustful tendencies, and lack of any character development. He soon removes Cindy's program forever and calls his fiance, saying that he truly loves her. But then we get to our twist ending. Samantha tells Ben that she loves him and to take his time coming home where we see that she has the Sensuous Cindy program herself as well, revealing that Ben's fiance was a closet lesbian all along and she makes out with Cindy too. Yep. This was the twist we were seriously building up to, people. 
Ben's fiance Samantha is secretly a closet lesbian or bisexual who was holding off on sex this whole time because she herself was having an affair with her own sensuous Cindy game AI. And we close out this episode with them having hot lesbian sex while our narrator Saw Guerrera creeps up on them. And that was the end to the Twilight Zone romance spectacular, Sensuous Cindy. Yep, all that bullcrap about Ben learning how to be faithful to his fiance was rendered completely pointless because his woman was a lesbian or bisexual all along. And the true villains in this horror tale are horny women who hate men. Real progressive thinking there, reboot Twilight Zone. I mean, seriously, this was the twist? It was the evil lesbians all along. So remember, men, when a woman refuses to have sex with you, it's not because she's either not into you, isn't ready for it, or is trying to build a slow sense of trust in you. It's because she's a lesbo. Thank you, Reboot Twilight Zone. Thank you for teaching us all that important lesson. Guys don't have to mature sexually. Women who don't want to bang us are just lesbians. And murdering your mistress to appear as a saint to your lover is a noble deed of a pure hero. Oh, how Rod Serling must take great joy in that message being used for his progressive hit franchise. So, how does this episode hold up? Do I even need to say anything at all? It sucks! This episode is a flaming dumpster fire of pure garbage. The main characters are awful. The gender stereotypes are dated beyond all belief. The moral is a botched mess. The story is super boring, which is surprising since it wanted to be a hot and sexy drama. The scary moments are weak, the cool settings are wasted, the lovemaking scenes are underwhelming, and worst of all, it insults your intelligence and remains to be incredibly boring. If you guys just want to watch some hot, sexy porn with lesbian action, then just go online. The internet has so much for you. I can honestly find fan art much hotter than this. I never thought I'd ever have to say this in my life, but don't come to the Twilight Zone to seek hot, spicy sexual content because these people are terrible at it. I don't even fully understand what this episode was trying to tell us. What were we supposed to learn? That lesbians exist? That everyone has sexual fantasies? That people cheat on their lovers? That everyone has checked out porn or dating games in their life? We're all lustful at times? That there's a difference between true love and shallow lust? Wow, Reboot. Way to teach us all basic concepts that we figure out in middle school. Honestly, this could have all been an okay story if it hadn't been outdone by every teen sex comedy of the late 90s and early 2000s. I mean, all of the stuff the Twilight Zone gives us are lessons and cliches that have been mocked and played straight on American Pie, Super Bad, Not Another Teen Movie, and even cheesy CW shows. This reboot adds nothing. They have nothing. Even the Yandere plot and psychotic AI have been done before on much better stories than this one. Sensuous Cindy is no How 9000, Brainiac, New 13, or GLaDOS. I will give the show some pity points for predicting that we'd use VR headsets and do get addicted to dating sims in the future. 
But then when they try to squeeze in this true romance subplot, the remainder of this episode falls apart. This episode suffers the exact same problem that held back Upgrade. It uses cool story elements that have been done on much better horror stories before, then does the bare minimum of those horror tales without giving it a unique identity, setting it apart from those exact other horror tales. It fails at just being a fun horror story because there's such little effort devoted to making it stand out. And to make matters suck even more, they were really hoping we'd buy this all as a true romantic moral story. The lesson about guys maturing and growing past their sexual fantasies is totally undercut by the twist of Ben's fiance being a closet lesbo. From the twist alone, it makes Ben's character arc completely pointless. He sacrificed everything to mend his relationship with Samantha, and then we learn she doesn't even love him in that way anymore. Lesbian or not, she's not into him anymore. Why should I, as an audience member, want to see these two get together? Their whole marriage is based on a lie. Ben is not relatable enough for us to connect with him, like the episode suggests. He's a horny creep who can't even wait a few months to get married until having all the sex he wants. He wants to cheat on his fiance with other women because he can't wait for a small amount of time and has no life beyond sexual pleasures. Now, I won't pretend I'm a saint who is above sexual fantasies and lust because, yes, I have had them. We all have had them, or if you're still young or single, still have them by today. I even have my top 10 waifus, but haven't shown them since nobody's interested in it. But you look me in the eye and tell me that you felt a single shred of hope for this guy who murdered his robot girlfriend to cover his own cheating heart and want to see him go through with the marriage with his lying hypocritical fiancé. Ben is intended to be the average sexually immature guy who needs to look past shallow love to find his true feelings for the girl of his dreams. But without the sympathy or deeper hints of a good man underneath, he comes across as too horrible of a guy to root for. This supernatural tale of suspense wants to be those coming-of-age sexual awakening stories about a guy learning what true love really is. But it's not. It's just not. This tale is about a horny creeper deleting his porn network and internet history to hide his true self from his fiance. It paints the females in this world as either sex objects to be chased or horny hypocrites who hate men and lie to them. Hotness is okay to have, but lacking minimal character traits weakens its power. I don't feel sorry for any of these people because they're all insecure pervs who lie about being decent people. The only one I feel sorry for is the janitor who has to clean up everyone's love juices from jacking off at work. The twist didn't mean to undermine the story, it was just simply a cheap attempt to get in some hot lesbian action. It's not a profound message about lesbianism or detailing how even women can fantasize. It's all just an excuse to show off Jamie Presley looking hot and making out with a chick. It's blatant clickbait to get horny guys to boost ratings for this near unknown show. It's showcasing how sex sells. I will admit that I don't have anything against shallow fan service being used in shows, since I'd be a hypocrite myself if I didn't tell you that I have watched stuff to see the hot characters. But this episode even makes me die inside because they don't admit their trickery. If you just watch something because it has a hot person or nudity in it, that's okay. Like this episode says, we all fantasize. But I hate this, mainly because the reboot Twilight Zone pathetically attempts to hide their real intentions. The reboot Twilight Zone only wanted some risque sexual content and lesbian kisses on TV to get people to watch it. 
not because they had good intentions or wanted to teach something like the show claims it does. If the show was really as progressive and hardcore as it pretended it was, then this episode would have made Samantha the real main character, and the story would be about a closet lesbian learning her true orientation, not just save it for the last minute to gain a memorable sexy twist ending. To make matters worse, both of our lovers are liars and creeps who are in for a doomed marriage. Ben is a shallow moron who fails at life, Samantha is a lying hypocrite who's basing her marriage on a lie, and sensuous Cindy is a wasted villain who was solely used to have Jamie Presley looking hot and given the charisma of a wooden plank. This episode fails at being a morality tale like a real Twilight Zone episode, and it fails to just be a fun horror story like half of our favorite horror shows. This was all just a ratings trap to get viewers to tune in for the barebone lesbian fan service. It's not a profound, thought-provoking tale rocking our worldview. It's just sleazy smut. Sleazy smut that wants to teach us that we don't understand true love. True love is different. To make matters worse, it's not even the fun kind of sleazy, like on Tales from the Crypt, The Dark Side, or Total Drama. It's just the disgusting kind of sleazy that we all hate in real life. Nobody on set looks like they're having fun, the writers don't seem to take advantage of the story's insanity, and they actually accept us to connect with this horrible couple. Like, as in, this could be you, you know these type of people, this can happen. It's just a lazy ratings trap for hot Jamie Presley fan service. Now, as I said, I'm not against people wanting some hot stuff to check out for shallow reasons, but people, take my word for it and don't waste your time on this. You want hot, sexy smut? Then please do what this episode tells us and use the internet. You can find sexualized stuff all over the place in the web, even of your favorite childhood icons and favorite fictional characters. It's like the Twilight Zone says, the internet took over our sex life. What are you gonna do? Just don't come to this Twilight Zone tale if you want shallow fun or intelligent material, because this disappoints at both. Huh, trying to put the new complexion on things when sleazy people think we're too sleazy. I give this awful, angering piece of crap a decayed skull. I'll admit that there were good ideas in this, but the show's refusal to take advantage of them and need to sink to appeasing the lowest common denominator destroyed it. The main characters suck. Jamie Presley gives an abysmal yandere performance. The moral is terrible. The plot points are disappointing. The sex scenes are not that hot. Its understanding of true love is a joke. Nothing is that memorable in it outside of that dumb lesbian twist. The story gives up halfway through, and worst of all, it is incredibly boring. This episode offers us some cool concepts, then does nothing with them. Casual viewers won't get that into it, hardcore Twilight Zone fans will really hate it, and even people who just want cheap fan service won't get that much out of it. As I said before, you want a good version of this tale? Then check out Seuss and the Real Girl. You don't have to catch up on a ton of the Gravity Falls continuity to enjoy it, but it is leagues higher than this waste, and it should really say a lot when a Disney cartoon gets you more awesomeness than the freaking Twilight Zone did. Sensuous Cindy left me with nothing. I don't recommend it. Watch something else. Sensuous Cindy may present some good ideas, but in the end, it's an obsolete, malfunctioning model that does not provide this reboot with any true love. Remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe, or just tune in for more fun here on Wolf Entertainment. I'm your host, Catastrophe, and I hope you all keep a healthy, romantic love life. Happy Valentine's Day. Jacket it, 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 jacket it